Hey, what's up everyone? Game Dad here, coming at you guys with a brand new collection series. This time we are taking a look at everything that is currently in my Super Nintendo collection. So, come with me as we check out what is in part one. Animaniacs was released by Konami in 1994, and this takes the classic, you know, kids cartoon where you're playing as Yakko, Wacko, and Dot, and you are just getting into video game shenanigans now. You have basic, you know, kind of adventure platforming action. And overall, I mean, the game is a lot of fun. It's super wacky, just like the cartoon, and it translates very well into a video game. Up next, we got Barbie Supermodel, released by Software Creations in 1993. And this game, it's like a set of mini games, kind of, that all play terribly they all control terribly and i mean honestly what do you expect from a barbie game none of them have ever been very good but i mean i guess you know there was some sort of a market for it and here we have battle clash released by intelligent systems in 1992 and this game i couldn't get any further past the start screen just because the way that i was capturing footage would not allow me to actually use the super scope to play this game but it is pretty fun. I mean, it's exactly what you would expect from a Super Scope game. You just point and click and, you know, shoot the baddies. That's basically it. Now, here we have Battletoads and Battle Maniacs, released by Rare in 1993. And this is kind of like an upgraded NES take on a Battletoads game. It has a lot more enemies. It's definitely sticking with the whole beat-em-ups vibe. And overall, I mean, it's okay graphically. Of course, it's better than the NES, but it's just an okay game. And here we have Battletoads and Double Dragon, released by Rare, also in 1993. And this game combines all the characters of Battletoads and Double Dragon, puts them all into one giant beat-em-up where you guys are teaming up and just having a blast taking out the baddies. This game is pretty fun. I will say the controls and enemies are very unforgiving, but, I mean, that's kind of to be expected with a Battletoads game, right? And up next, we got Big Sky Trooper, released by Lucas Arts in 1995. And this game is a little wacky. I mean, it is fun, but it's pretty quirky in the sense that, you know, you start the game, you answer some very, like, bogus questions, and you do so well that you become a 21 star general and a Big Sky Trooper. And then you just start playing the game. I mean, it's fun, but it's definitely kind of wacky. Here we have Bill Walsh College Football, released by Visual Concepts in 1994, and as with most sports games, if you've been watching any of these collection videos in the past, you know I'm terrible at them, I don't understand the appeal, and this game is no different, it just has worse graphics than some of its 3D counterparts. I mean, I, I just, I don't see the appeal in football games, especially video game versions of them. Here's a fun one. We got Boogerman, a pick and flick adventure released by Interplay Entertainment in 1995. And this game definitely tries to go over the top with the gross factor. I mean, your ammunition is your flicking boogers at people. As you can see, there's snot dripping off of everything. There's gross pimples that you can pop on the ground. You collect plungers. I mean, if you just stand there long enough, the guy will just start picking his nose and eating it. So very goofy, rather gross, but still a fun platformer. Up next, we got Brain Lord, released by Produce in 1994. And this game is your typical RPG from the 16-bit era. You go through a crap ton of dialogue and messages and stuff before you ever get to actually playing the game but overall i mean it's pretty fun there are better rpgs but this one it really wasn't half bad up next is bubsy 2 released by accolade in 1993 and i don't know who is asking for a second one of these i don't know who is asking for the modern remake of this but these games are just not great i mean this is like a total sonic vibe that you're seeing right here you gotta just run fast but the platforming isn't that great. The controls aren't that great. I mean, it's a cool mascot character, and the levels look really nice, but that's about it. Up next is Super Castlevania IV, released by Konami in 1991, and this game is absolutely fantastic. This is a very good entry in the Castlevania franchise, and 
It has all of the classic gameplay that you would expect with massively updated graphics for the 16-bit era and great music, great gameplay, and it's just a blast. This is such a good game. You should definitely pick it up. Up next is Choplifter 3, released by Beam Software in 1994. And this one I really like compared to the other Choplifter games that I have. The graphics are great, the music is great, and the controls are just so much better than other ones. Plus, you know, if you get shot, you don't instantly die. You actually get a health bar and you go and collect, you know, all the different soldiers and stuff and just, you know, classic gameplay, but super fun. Here's a fun but weird one. That is Clay Fighter, released by Visual Concepts in 1993. And everything is just like claymation. But I will say this game is difficult. I don't know if it's just me and I'm just terrible at it, which is very possible. But I was beating the heck out of this person, and then in one move, she almost completely destroyed me. So, yeah, this game is unforgiving. Up next is Clay Fighter 2 Judgment Clay, released by Interplay Entertainment in 1995. And this game, it's still like claymation, but they definitely went in a different route with it, and I don't really like it. I mean, it's a different publisher, so maybe that's why it was so drastically changed. But overall, I thought the first Clay Fighter was a lot better than this one. Up next is Chrono Trigger, released by Square in 1995. And this is quite possibly one of the greatest Super Nintendo games, if not one of the greatest RPGs ever made, hands down. If this isn't your favorite one, I'm almost positive it would be in your top five. This is a fantastic game. Amazing graphics, amazing effects, extremely satisfying gameplay music everything is awesome in this here's a fun one that is cool spot released by virgin interactive in 1993 and although there are several versions of the cool spot games i think the super nintendo one is probably my favorite it's just classic platforming action and it's just fun you go through you're getting all the spots playing as your number one seven up character and that's about it i mean you just jump on stuff get points and go to the next level up next, we got Cool World, released by Ocean Software in 1993, and this one is a video game adaptation of the movie of the same name. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I believe it was Brendan Fraser that was in this movie. So, you know, classic 90s kind of action, but very strange game, just like how the movie was very strange. And, I mean, overall, the gameplay is fine. It's kind of like a platformer, beat-em-up style game. It's not terrible, but... Definitely not one where you have to go out and get Up next is Demolition Man, released by Virgin Interactive in 1995. Again, this is based on the movie of the same name. And honestly, I know it's kind of like a cult classic. This is one of my favorite movies, though. I don't know what it is. It's just so good to me. It was an awesome movie, and this version of the game is actually, in my mind, far superior to the other versions. I think I have this on 3DO, and man, that game is crap. Up next is Desert Strike Return to the Gulf, released by Visual Concepts in 1992. And the graphics are pretty cool in this, and the overall concept behind it is pretty cool. Kind of like a quasi-open world attack helicopter kind of game. The controls are a little strange and hard to get used to, and it is really hard to target in on people to actually take out the enemies. But it is a pretty cool flying 3D-ish helicopter game. Now, here's a game that was better on the Genesis, and that is Disney's Aladdin, released by Capcom in 1993. And while this game, yes, it is good on the Super Nintendo, I will give it credit for that. I just like the Genesis version better because you got a sword. I mean, that was awesome. This game, I will say, it does have difficulty, just like the other versions of it. But overall, I mean, it's a fun platformer. It had a great visual aesthetics, and it's just a classic on the system. Up next, we got Goof Troop, released by Capcom in 1993, and this one reminds me of Adventure Island, sort of, but with a Disney Goofy and his son Max feel to it. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but overall, I mean, you're just going on an adventure as Goofy and just having some good old classic Disney fun as you do it. Disney's Timon and Pumbaa's Jungle Games, released by Tier Text Design Studios in 1997, and I don't know why this game was made. This game is terrible. I mean, it's just, as you can see, the graphics are awful. I mean, it's almost like cheesy FMV status, but 
actually drawn in with pixels. I don't know. It's weird. And it's just a bunch of mini games. Like right here. This is Frogger. It's just a blatant ripoff of Frogger. And here's an absolute classic on the SNES. That is Donkey Kong Country, released by Rare in 1994. And this is the one that started it all. I mean, the graphics were just something of the future whenever this came out. The way that they were able to get so detailed with the characters, the music was amazing, the platforming, the levels, everything was just awesome in this game. And you just didn't see other things like this. And here we have the follow-up. That is Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Kong Quest, released by Rare in 1995. And this is just kind of a continuation of the same thing. It's not the exact same story or anything like that. But this time, you actually have Diddy and Dixie Kong that you can play as. So that's pretty fun. But it's more of the same platforming action. There's minor graphical tweaks. There's even more amazing music. And the game is awesome. Last up is the third in the franchise, that is Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble, released by Rare in 1996. And this one, they did add more of an interactive overworld kind of mechanic, as you can see there with the boat. But overall, it's the same gameplay from the first two games. Again, slight graphical tweaks. Everything's a little bit brighter, in my opinion. But overall, I don't really care for this one as much as the other two. Number two is definitely my favorite. So there you have it, everyone. That is everything that, that is in part one of my current SNES collection. Now, if you liked today's video, please be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, please be sure to also hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell, so you get an alert every time I got a new video coming out. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.